Good morning, St. John. This is Reverend Dr. Lakeisha Matthews, and we are here to worship the Lord on this morning. I am super excited because the word of God says that the hour has come, and it now is when those who love God shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Who are the true worshipers? Who should worship God? Well, it's simple. Those who know that God has been good, those who have a testimony, those who can say that God kept them on this week. And listen, St. John, it does not matter how you worship him. You can lift up holy hands. You can look up to heaven. You can simply smile or pat your foot. What matters is that you worship because the hour has come and the Father is seeking such to worship him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you and your spirit into this sanctuary. Take over and take control. We pray that you have your way and your will be done. In the name of Jesus, amen. St. John, worship begins now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Won't you stand on your feet with us? Of course, we want to let you know this morning that if you got a problem, we can tell you that Jesus can fix it. All right?
everybody, every hand clapping, every heart raised. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. This is the part where you can participate. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us. Come on, look around. Touch three people. Say, come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, let's give him the glory. Come on, let's bless his name. Come on, let's clap our hands. Come on, let's lift up holy hands. Come on, let's lift our voices. Come on, let's get in his presence. Come on, let's have a good time. Come on, let's enjoy Jesus. Come on, let's give him the praise. Come on, look around. Tell three people he's worthy. Oh, come on, look around, tell him he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Everybody, clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, you at home, clap your hands and give the Lord the praise. While your hands are clapping, open your mouth, tell him thank you. Tell him, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this house. You are welcome to speak to me. You're welcome to use the music ministry, come on, to bless my life. You are welcome to use the pastor to speak your word. Come on, clap those hands. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Every hand raised quickly. God's about to blow our minds for about 60 seconds. Take a moment and just speak to him. I want you to tell him, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. My heart is open to everything you want to do. God, speak to me through the fellowship, through the worship, through the preaching. Come on, with your voice, not just your mind. Tell him, I'm open. I avail myself to how you want to minister to me. And out of everything I've carried this week, in this moment, I leave it at the throne of your altar. And I embrace and I receive everything you want to do. Every ounce of stress, every bit of disappointment, all of the anxiety and depression of the week, I'm leaving it in your hands. Come on, tell them, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, come on. The presence of the king is in this room. He says, I'm here to minister to you. I'm here to bless your life. I'm here to empower you. I'm here to give you strength. And I'm here to give you courage. Come on, about another 30 seconds. Just talk to him. Just talking to God is as easy as tell him how you feel. Tell him what you're going through. Tell him who he is. Thank him for being your source and your strength. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, tell him one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome you are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Have your seats in worship. Hallelujah. Give your attention to the screens. Amen. Hello, St. John family and friends. Today is Share Sunday, where we highlight evangelism and sharing our faith with others. Here are your weekly announcements. First, will all guests who are worshiping with us in person please raise your hand and an usher will bring you a guest information packet. You can fill out the guest information card and leave it in the offering basket shortly in our service. If you're a guest online, please say, I'm a guest in the chat section so that we can welcome you. There is a QR code on screen for all in-person and virtual guests to scan to share your information with us. We look forward to connecting with you. Also, we invite everyone to share the link to our stream with others so that they can be blessed by our worship service. The SJBC Golden Hearts Ministry invites seniors to a day dance party on April 24th from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Dust off those dancing shoes and join us for fun, music, and fellowship. Lunch will be served, invite a friend or two, and register today at sjbc.org.
www.eventbrite.com or call the church office to reserve your spot and join us for this fun day of fellowship. St. John is offering support to those who are or have navigated a separation or divorce. Divorce Care is here to help guide you on your journey to recovery. Join us for a transformative 13-week series available both in person and online where you'll find comfort and hope. Divorce Care will meet every first and third Friday at 7 p.m. Sign up at divorcecare.org by searching for Columbia, Maryland or head to sjbc.org and click on the graphic to register. The St. John Food Pantry is open every third Saturday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. or while supplies last. Our next food pantry will be Saturday, April 20th. Bring your shopping bags and spread the word to those in need. And those are your announcements for today. You can stay connected by following us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribing to us on YouTube. Please check the website at www.sjbc.org for a list of upcoming events and information. We hope that you will enjoy the rest of our worship experience today. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, St. John. It's good to see you on this another Lord's Day. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are there any glad folk in the house today? Glad to be in the land of the living? Glad to see another day? Glad to have the blood running warm in your veins. Glad to be in the presence of the Lord. Glad that God still answers prayer. Glad that God is still in the healing business. Glad that God is still opening doors. Glad that God is still moving mountains. Glad that God can do anything but fail. Are there any glad people in the house today? Well, open up your mouth and give God some praise if you're glad that we serve a mighty good God. Glad to be in the house one more time. I'm going to ask, we, we've got a special guest worshiping with us today, and so I'm going to ask the gentleman with the green uh, top on to please stand. I want, I want to welcome one of our special guests. His name is Harry Dunn a former police officer who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. Amen. He's running for Congress in Maryland, and on Friday, a day ahead of the third anniversary of the deadly riot done said via X, formerly known as Twitter, on January 6th, I defended our democracy from insurrectionists as a Capitol Police officer after President Biden honored me with the Presidential Citizens Medal. I swore an oath to protect our constitution, to protect our democracy, Dunn said. It's what allowed me to protect some members of Congress who I knew were bigots, who helped fan the flames that started all this. Let's give God some praise one more time for our special guest, Brother Harry Dunn. Thank you for worshiping with us, and let's keep him in our prayers. And he's going to be in the narthex immediately after our worship. And so you'll be able to have conversation with him and just remember him in your prayers. Then we're going to ask Deacon Adrian Gaylord to please make her way. Take your seat. I just wanted to get my hug. <laughs> Deacon Adrian. <laughs> the reason I had Deacon Adrian to come up 
is because congratulations are in order because she successfully defended her dissertation to earn a doctorate of strategic communications from Regent University. As a high-level communications professional and a wonderful part of our deacon ministry and our church, we are so proud of this major accomplishment. And so won't you join me, St. John, in congratulating Deacon Dr. Adrian Gaylor. unaware, but several years ago, before the pandemic, Deacon Adrian used to sit over there in the back row, and she would leave every Sunday right after the sermon, and then finally she graduated from leaving right after the sermon to sitting in the narthex. And one Sunday I told Deacon, Reverend West, I said, Reverend West, go over and speak to that woman. She's been coming and nobody is talking to her. And not only has she come from being in the back to the narthex, now she's in the deacon ministry, she's in our choir and our praise team, and now she is Dr. Adrian Gaylord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And then we're going to ask Cam Copeland to please come up with her mother, Lisa Copeland. That's right, Cam. That's right, Cam. That's right, Cam. Amen. They're going to be up here before tomorrow. Come on. I believe in them. They're going to be up here before tomorrow. We want to wish Cam, who is Lisa Copeland's daughter, this past week, which there was a Thursday. On uh, this past Thursday, Cam turned nine years old for the very first time. And then, the reason I had Lisa to come up is because congratulations are in order, not just to Cam, but also to Lisa, whose daughter, Kaya, on April 3rd, gave birth to a bouncing baby girl, Ari Monroe Coleman. She was born weighing five pounds, 4.5 and mommy and baby are doing well. And so let's keep them in our prayers. Congratulations. Praise God. And then at our 8 o'clock service, uh, Cindy Baker was here. But we also want to congratulate Todd. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm out of order. Well, you're following along with me. I skipped one, but we'll get back to the one I skipped. But Todd and Cindy Baker, they were at our 8 o'clock service. Cindy was, at least. And we congratulated them on their 26th wedding anniversary. And then Martin and Joanne Johnson. That was the one I should have said first. Martin and Joanne Johnson. They were at our 8 o'clock service. And Martin and Joanne on March 28th, they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. And so we congratulated them as well. And then I want my baby girl to come up quickly. Baby girl, come on quickly. I, I want you to know that this past Friday, baby girl, she put into motion that old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And I want you to know that this past Friday, my baby girl, First Lady Kim's daughter, but my baby girl, just to make the distinction, First Lady Kim's daughter, but my baby girl, she got her driver's license. And baby girl is some kind of excited. Amen. 
And so Baby Girl just wants all of you to know that if you need a driver, she's available for a price. And she'll give you the college student discount, but after, after May, it's gonna be the grad student discount. So you better get your, get your request in while it's still affordable. Congratulations, sweetie. And then we want to thank our deacon ministry. We want to thank our music ministry, our ushers, and our funeral repast, a food ministry, and our entire church family for your support to the family of Sister Sylvia Jita yesterday during her memorial service. As a church family, our support for another in times of celebration and times of struggle. They're very important. Ushers, go get um, Barrister Todd Baker, and uh, they're very important. And I am proud as your pastor when we show up and express our love like we did yesterday. And so let's give God some praise for how we continue to minister to those in need. I'm having Barrister Todd come up because his wife Cindy was at our 8 o'clock service. He may have been here too, but he wasn't in the sanctuary, so I didn't see him. But he's here at our 1015. And so I already shared the good news, but now you can put a face with the name. So won't you join me one more time in congratulating from this past Thursday, Todd and Cindy Baker celebrating their 26th wedding anniversary. Last but not least, Vera Miles with an eye, could you please make your way to the platform? Several years ago before our pandemic, Vera Miles served as our office manager and uh, operations manager, and she was just an exceptional talent, an exceptional gift, exceptional woman of God here and she moved to Atlanta and so since we've been without a finance and operations manager Vera has so graciously uh, loaned us her time from Atlanta and so she's been working remotely and she came up this weekend to do some things that she couldn't do remotely and so I just wanted to introduce to some of our new members one of our faithful interim employees Vera Miles with an eye. Amen. We're just so grateful to God for how he continues to use us and for how he continues to bless us. Let's give God some praise for how he fills us up to use us up in this world. God is so faithful and good. I'm reminded this morning about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus' entire ministry, while people said it was about different things, Jesus says his whole ministry was about one thing, and that's the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom is near in his Jewish context in the first century. They expected that God's kingdom was far away and would, it would take a long time to embrace and achieve it and Jesus says no 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 the kingdom is not far it's near us and the kingdom is not later it's right now you think about the kingdom of God it, it includes healing of the nations the kingdom of God includes peace in your life the kingdom of God includes provision for your family and for your children and for your loved ones. And Jesus' entire ministry was designed to show those who he ministered to and even us today that God's kingdom is not for later, but somebody say, it's for right now. Why am I glad his kingdom is now? I'm glad his kingdom is now because that means that I'm not waiting for anything, but everything I need from God is available. Somebody say, right now. I know we're in Columbia, Maryland, and I won't insult you and tell you that I acknowledge that most of us are pretty bougie in this region. Somebody say amen. But I like eating at Silver Spoon restaurants. I like eating at Greasy Spoon restaurants, kind of places some of y'all are too bougie to go to Waffle House with me. Any Waffle House folks in here? 
I see all 16 of us. It's all good. Somebody say, it's all good. Some of those diners you go to when the food is ready, instead of it being like the nice white tablecloth restaurants that I can hang at too, amen. Instead of it being like those restaurants, a lot of times they just ring the bell to let the waiter or waitress know that the order is up, that the food is ready. And I think about the ministry of Jesus Christ. His first sermon recorded in scripture says that the kingdom has come. And, 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 and a simple way to wrap that up is to say that Jesus Christ has rang heaven's bell to say everything you're waiting on is here right now. Everything you need from God, it's here right now. Somebody said the kingdom is here. And the blessing of the kingdom being here is God invites us to use all of what God has given us. I want to tell you, everything God's ever given you, it's for the purpose of the kingdom. You may not even realize that your career is for the kingdom. It's not just for you to make money and pay bills. It's for you to make an impact in the world and let God's light from his house shine wherever he sends you. You may not even realize it, but your marriage or your romantic relationship, it's not just about you having a boo to kick it with and eat with. It's about the kingdom that God would use your fire and somebody else's fire to build a stronger fire to show his light in the world. Somebody say kingdom. I also got to tell you, everything God's ever given you is not just for you to wear your money and eat your money and live in your money and drive in your money, but even your money is about, somebody say, the kingdom. That the earth is the Lord, that the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwell therein. It all belongs to the kingdom. And I want to now invite you as we posture our hearts to give and worship today to consider that God can use me to build God's kingdom. God wants to use your resources. He wants to use your hands, your heart, your resources, your finances to build his kingdom. And we're going to do just that. I encourage you now, partner with what the local church is doing here at St. John by believing God in the area of tithing. That's one-tenth of your income. It's offering. It's, it's a gift that we give to God out of our heart. I want to challenge each person as the ushers are moving with envelopes. If you need one, you can raise that hand as many are doing. But I want to challenge you to give something. I want to begin by challenging you to give at the level God asks. God asks that we return the tithe to him, one-tenth. Statistically, most don't tithe. I want to challenge everybody to give something. I need you to help me for that neighbor that's tuning out the preacher. And you tell them, look at three people, tell them, give something. Give something. Come on, give something. Come on, give something. Give as God has prospered you. Prepare those gifts now, those digital gifts, those in-person gifts. Would you prepare your gifts even as I speak that the Spirit of the Lord would guide you to push the work of the kingdom? I don't want God's kingdom to advance without my brick in the building. Come on, that's all my seed is. That's all my tithe is. It's a contribution to what God is building. I'm not going to use God's stuff to build my kingdom and not use God's stuff to also build his. Can somebody say amen? I'm not just gonna build my closet and my retirement and my own home without building God's home, amen? And I invite you to do that. Let's pray and ask God's blessings over every gift, every tithe today. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to you and it's all about your kingdom. Now, Lord, we present our kingdom gifts as kingdom-minded people realizing that you call for us to return a portion of what you have given us to demonstrate that you can trust us to give us more and to demonstrate our gratitude and recognition that it all belongs to you. Now, Lord, I pray a blessing, Psalm 100-fold, that you would bless and multiply what we give today. Let no person suffer for giving out of obedience and their love for you. And we give you praise in advance that every gift will benefit not just the church, but the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. 
If you're able to stand, I want to ask that you join me in standing this morning. Would you stand all over the sanctuary? You at home, I challenge you to give now in worship experience and in the sanctuary. If you're able to walk under the direction of the ushers, let's all walk in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. All you have to do is read the word. Every question that you need an answer, that answer is in the word of God. All you have to do is read the word. Amen. Man, well, it is second Sunday here at St. John, so you know what that means. That means we have youth church for our youth here at St. John. Amen. So can I have all of our volunteers come up now with your signs uh, so that you can be in place to receive the children. Amen. Can we give God some praise for all of our volunteers? All right, so, and can we have all of our children between the ages of three and 18, please stand and come to the front of the sanctuary. You have three to five, six to eight, nine to 12, and 13 to 18. Okay, uh, is Johnny's, can I get you to scoot down some? To your left, to your left. Scoot down to your left some. Three to five over here. Miss Eleanor, can I get you to come down to your left some more? Can we give God praise for all of our youth here at St. John? Well, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for another youth church experience. We thank you for each and every youth who have made their way here this morning. We thank you that youth church is where learning about Jesus meets fun and excitement. And we know that the impact that they have here at youth church will change their lives forever. And God, we just ask that you continue to cover and keep every youth that comes through St. John and experiences your spirit and your power and your presence through youth church and it's in your name we pray amen you all can now go to your classes and can, can we just continue to put our hands together to make some noise and to cheer on our youth as they make their way uh, to their classrooms
Jesus. Come on, y'all can sing with me. Say no, not one. No, not one. None else could heal. through the ministry of music and song, reminding us that the best place that we can ever be is in the center of God's will. Because when you're in the center of God's will, when you've done your best, God will take care of the rest. When you're in the center of His will, you'll discover that God knows best. When you're in the center of his will, you'll discover that God has a way of making things come out so that while you're trying to figure it out, he has already worked it out. Is anybody here who knows that when you're in the center of God's will, God can turn things around? God can work miracles in your life? God can work things out? God can provide for your needs? God can move mountains out of your way? Somebody ought to give God some praise today because miracles start to happen. Shackles start to get released. Strongholds are removed. Tell people everywhere I go, we've got the baddest singing brothers on this side of heaven. Not just because of how they sound, but because of what they say. And so we thank you for your ministry through the ministry of music and song today. We also are grateful to God. I saw him here. There he is. Our marketing and communication specialist. Come up here, Todd. This week, Ta is an ocular illustration that God is in the healing business. This past week, Ta had this infection in his joints to the point where he could hardly move, and he called for medical assistance and he was in so much pain that when they got there he was on the floor hollering and they took him to get medical attention and so he went from the floor hollering in his house to the house of God praising today because God is still working miracles to have Todd back with us. Uh, Todd said he's about 95%. 
He's about 95%. Now, I will tell you that our marketing and communication specialist, he is a talker. And so if you get to if you get to be around him, just ask him to let you get a word in edgewise because he'll, he'll monopolize the conversation. God bless you, Tom. If you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn with us to the Old Testament book of Psalms, Psalm 27. And we're going to be reading verses 13 and 14. Psalm 27, verses 13 and 14. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. However, follow along in whatever translation that you have. If you're able, won't you stand in honor of the author of the Word of God? Now, hear these words from the Word of God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this, his holy and most righteous word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the very meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. For a few moments this morning, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind. You can make it. You can make it. Church, it's amazing. It's amazing how two people can have the same or similar trials, but they can manage and handle those trials in two completely different different ways because one person can receive a difficult diagnosis and that diagnosis can send them on a downward spiral toward depression while another person can receive that same difficult diagnosis and instead of being depressed this other person can make the determination to live life to its fullest and one person, church, can receive a pink slip from their job and they can become so bitter with their employer that they'll go home and grab a gun and come back to their job and shoot everything and everybody in sight. But another person can get the same pink slip and instead of shooting, they'll throw their hands up in the air and they'll start shouting knowing that God would never close one door without opening another door in your life. And one person can face the pain of losing a loved one in their family. And that pain can, can make them decide to turn their back on God. While another person can lose a loved one in their lives as well. But instead of turning their back on God, they'll turn their face toward God knowing that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Well, church, I believe, I believe that the difference between these two polar opposites can be surmised by the mindset of those who believe that they can make it. 
Because those persons who believe that they can make it learn how to accept and they learn how to adjust and they learn how to advance in this world because they accept negative situations and circumstances in their lives. And after accepting their circumstance and accepting their situation, then they turn and make adjustments based on whatever circumstance and situation is prevalent in their lives. And then, after making the adjustment, they resolve within themselves that they're going to advance despite whatever the circumstance may be. And church, I believe, I believe that there's somebody here right now and somebody here under the sound of my voice who has adopted these three words, adjustment, adjustment and acceptance and advancement as their mantra for their life. Because you've learned how to accept and, and you've learned how to adjust and you've learned how to advance despite whatever is in your way because as you look back over your life you've accepted some stuff that's come your way because you've accepted some disappointments and you've accepted some trials and you've accepted some tribulations and you've accepted some challenges and you've accepted the fact that some people have walked in and walked out of your life and you've accepted that your loved one is no longer with you and after you were making that acceptance you started making the adjustment because you've adjusted your expectation and you've adjusted physically and you've adjusted financially and you've adjusted socially and you've adjusted geographically and after you've accepted and after you've adjusted you made the resolve that you are going to advance and church because you've accepted and because you have adjusted and because you have advanced you need to know today that you just qualified to be the the evidence that you can make it in this world because if the truth be told you've made it through some stuff that would have made the average person lose their mind and you made it through some stuff that would have made the average person go cuckoo for cocoa bust and you made it through some stuff that would have made the average person throw in the towel and you made it through some stuff that would have made the average person break down and crumble up under the pressure but thanks be to God I said thanks be to God that you made it to the other side of your adversity and so is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because despite all the stuff that you've been through in your life and despite the devil hitting you with the best shot that he could and despite Despite all the doors that have been slammed in your face, the praise report is today is that you're still here. Is there anybody here who's glad today that after all the burdens you've been bearing and after all the bad news you've been hearing and after all the crosses you've been carrying, you're still here where my survivors at? Is there anybody here who can say, I'm still here after that bad doctor's report and I'm still here after he walked out of my marriage and I'm still here after the devil had haters on my track somebody ought to give God some praise today because despite all that's going on in your life you're still here you're still here well well when you look when you look at the life of David when you look at the life of David you can see that David has made it through some stuff in his life. Because in our text for today, in, in our text for today, David is pressing the rewind button in his life. And he's pressing the rewind button in his mind. And he's, he's remembering a trial in his life that nearly took him out. 
And David is reflecting back over some difficulty and reflecting back over some circumstance that literally almost caused him to throw in the towel. But church, David managed to make it through whatever it was that he was going through. And trust, that ought to be good news for somebody here right now because you know that whatever attack may come up against you, the good news is that if God be for you, I said, if God be for you, then that's more than the world against you. Because regardless to whatever attack comes up against you on your job, and regardless to whatever attack comes up against you in your house, and regardless to whatever attack comes up against you with your health, and regardless to whatever attack comes against you with your children, the good news is that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world because my Bible tells me that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper and my Bible tells me that if you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and if you lean not to your own understanding if in all your ways you acknowledge him he will I said he will I didn't say he may, I didn't say he might, I didn't say he should, and I didn't say he could, but I said he will direct your path. And the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and shall not faint. And so is there anybody here who can to give God some praise because the God we serve always keeps his word. He always, he always keeps his word. And so church, as we go through, as we go through 2024, there's going to be some stuff that's going to come up against you that's going to make you want to throw in the towel. And so get ready for some trials and get ready for some tribulation and get ready for a diversity of adversity to come in your life because you're too anointed for the devil not to plan to attack you. I said you're too anointed for the devil not to plan to attack you and God's been too good to you for the devil not to plan to attack you and you're using too many skills and too many gifts and too many talents for the Lord for the devil not to plan to attack you and so David in our text gives us some strategies that we can use to make it through whatever life throws at you because the first thing that David says the first thing that David says is that whenever you feel like you can't make it in this world David said that you've got to be real about the possibilities of fainting David said you've got to be real about the possibilities of fainting now, now, in verse 13, church, in verse 13, David said, I had fainted. In other words, David was saying that, that I almost lost heart. And I almost threw in the towel. And I almost waved the white flag. And I almost surrendered because something happened that was so devastating that David said, I almost fainted. Now, church, this is David. This is, you, you know, David, the one who is after God's own heart. This is David. You, you remember the one who, who killed a lion and a bear with his own 
bare hands. This is David, that little boy who went to the valley of Eli to fight that giant named Goliath. And all he took was a slingshot with five smooth stones. But there was something that came up in David's life that made David feel like he was about to faint. Now church, watch this. Just a couple of verses ago, David has been bragging on God. Because in verses 1 through 6, David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Just a few verses ago, David said, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so, church, David said in verses 1 through 6 that the Lord's got my back. But, church, the same David that bragged about God in verses 1 through 6 is the same David who felt like he was fainting in verse number 13. And, church, that ought to tell somebody that even faithful folk feel like fainting sometime. I said even faithful folk feel like fainting sometime because as saved as you are and as sanctified as you are and as anointed as you are, there's going to come a situation that can come up against you that will make you want to give up every now and then because as faithful as Jeremiah was, Jeremiah said that there was a time in my life where I didn't even want to mention the name of the Lord. And then as faithful as John the Baptist was, John the Baptist said that there was a time when I even questioned whether it was Jesus who was the Messiah for myself. And as faithful as Elijah was, Elijah sat beneath a juniper tree and said, Lord, I've had enough. You might as well get ready to take my life. And and Jesus, as faithful as he was when he was there in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. And so if you want to make it through whatever it is that you're going through, you've got to be real about the possibility that even though you're saved and even though you're sanctified and even though you're anointed, the devil can and still cause a situation to come up against you personally and the devil can still cause a situation to come up against your family and it can make your faith feel like it's almost about to fall and so you've got to be real about the fact that life can cause you to feel like giving up every now and then but church, can I, give you, can I give you some good news? Can I give you some good news? Because being real about the possibilities of fainting in your life, that qualifies you to receive power from your father. I said, when you're real about, when you're real about the possibilities of fainting in your life, that qualifies you to receive the power that only comes from your father. And that's why Paul said, that's why Paul said that it's only when I am weak that God will step in and make me become strong. And so if you think that you're too strong to ever need God to come into your life, and if you think that you're too spiritual to ever get to the point where you're going to feel like fainting. God sent me here to tell somebody that the moment you lift up your hands and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? And if thou, if thou you lift up your hands to God, that's when you become a candidate for God to give you power from on high to rise above whatever is getting you down. And so is there anybody here who needs power to keep on dreaming and power to keep on believing and power to keep on hoping and power to 
keep on persevering and power to keep on enduring well when you confess that you're about to faint God's got the power to help you to make it even when you feel that you can't even take it because the God we serve he's got so much power in his hand that nothing in this world is too hard for our God is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because if you got a problem it's no problem with God it's no problem it's no problem and so church even if you're a child of God it's still possible that you can become overwhelmed and it's still possible for you to get to the point where you feel depressed and it's still possible for you to get to the point where, where even you doubt if God is going to come to your rescue. Because the songwriter was right when the songwriter said, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Now there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And so David said, David said the first thing, the first thing I had to do was I had to be real about the possibilities of fainting in my life. But then lastly, David, David said, and I told, I told the 8 o'clock crowd, I, I told the 8 o'clock crowd at 8 o'clock that, that the last thing you've got to do if, if you feel like you can't make it. I told the 8 o'clock crowd is that's the time when you've got to rely on the power of your faith. You're going to have to listen to the tape for the 8 o'clock message. But for this crowd, I want to tell you that the last thing you've got to do whenever you feel like fainting is not just rely on the power of your faith, but the last thing you've got to do is you've got to remind yourself to push to the finish. Whenever you feel like you can't make it, you've got to remind yourself to push to the finish. Look, look, at, look at David, look at David. David said, David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, now church, I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it, but this is a major admonition that's coming from David because David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord now, now what makes this statement what makes this statement such a powerful statement is not just the words of the statement but what makes this statement so powerful church is when you consider who david is talking to it's not just the words in the statement. It's when you consider who David is talking to. Because all through these verses and all through this text, David has been having a dialogue between him and his Savior. Because in the first six verses of Psalm 27, David is talking about the sovereign. And then from verses 7 through 13, David is talking to the sovereign. And so all in this psalm, David is talking about God or David is talking to God. But in verse 14, David doesn't talk about God and David doesn't even talk to God. But in verse 14, David starts talking to himself. David starts talking to himself. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, church, is because I, I know that this might sound a little strange to some folk. But, but I want to dispel a little misnomer that's going around in the house of God. I want to dispel a misnomer that's going around in this world because you're not always crazy if you talk to yourself. Because sometimes to keep from going crazy, you got to talk to yourself. I 
God said, you're not always crazy when you talk to yourself. But to keep from going crazy, you got to talk to yourself. In fact, somebody here right now, your neighbor ought to be glad that you talk to yourself because if you didn't talk to yourself, you wouldn't be ready to talk to anybody else. Because sometimes, church, sometimes you got to talk yourself out of doing to others what they just did to you. And sometimes you got to talk yourself out of hurting somebody because they just did something to hurt you. And sometimes you got to talk yourself out of cussing somebody, I'm sorry, I mean speaking in known terms because somebody just stepped on your very last nerve. And so sometimes if you want to make it, you've got to learn how to talk to yourself. Now, now church, Carl Jung, J-U-N-G, Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist and a Swiss psychoanalyst, Carl Jung, he coined this phrase called the shadow self. Carl Jung, he, he coined this phrase called the shadow self. And Carl Jung suggests, Carl Jung suggests that your shadow self is the self behind yourself that you can't see. Now, that's what Carl Jung said. Carl, Carl Jung suggests that all of us have another self. In fact, Carl Jung suggests, church, that there's a stronger you and a weaker you. And there are times when the stronger you and the weaker you start wrestling with one another. Because both your stronger you and your weaker you want control over your life. And in our text for today, the stronger David talks to the weaker David. And the stronger David tells the weaker David, wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And God will strengthen thy heart. And then it was, if, it was as if, church, the weaker David isn't listening. And so the stronger David says it again. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Because both your weaker you and your stronger you want control over your life. Now, church, watch this. Watch this. I discovered that both the stronger you and the weaker you use the same three letters, O-W-H, when they're talking to you. I've discovered, church, I've discovered that the stronger you and the weaker you, they use the same three letters when they are talking to you. But the difference is that the weaker you takes the letters O-W-H and the weaker you spells the word ha. Because the weaker you, the weaker you church always tries to make you doubt about how you're going to come out and about how you're going to make it. And the weaker you try to scare you by trying to ask you questions like how you're gonna pay your bills this month and, and how are you gonna get back on your feet and, and how are you gonna make it from bankruptcy and how are you gonna make it from that divorce and how are you gonna provide for your family and how are you gonna pay for your child's tuition through college and so the the weaker you tells the stronger you and he takes those three letters and spells the word how and he does all he can to make you doubt whether God can see you through but thanks be to God I said thanks be to God Thank God there's a stronger you because the stronger you takes those same three letters, O-W-H, 
and the stronger you doesn't take those three letters and spell the word how, but the stronger you takes those three letters O-W-H and the stronger you spells the word who. Because the stronger you reminds you that I don't know how, but I do know who. Church folk don't know when to shout because I know who answers my prayer and I know who is still in the blessing business and I know who is holding my hand and I know who can turn things around and I know who can open doors that no man can close and I know who can move mountains out of your way and I know who can calm the raging storms and I know who can provide for your needs is there anybody here who came to give God some praise cause you may not know how but you do know who I said I said you know who and somebody came to church today and your stronger self is dom dominating your weaker self because you came to church today asking yourself how am I going to make it through the rest of this year and how am I going to get up from that breakup and how am I going to provide for my family and how am I going to run my business and how am I going to keep up from losing my mind well I stopped by to tell somebody that I don't know how you're going to make it through this week and I don't know how you're going to make it through this month and I don't know how you're going to make it through this year but I do know who is able to see you through so is there anybody here who can testify that you don't know how that God is going to make a way out of no way and you don't know how our God is going to open doors for you and you don't know how God is going to bless your life and you don't know how God is going to see you through and you don't know how God's going to turn things around and you don't know how God is going to level that mountain and you don't know how God is going to raise that valley but while you don't know how the good news is that you don't have to know how because you know who is able to see you through because the same God that woke you up this morning and the same God that walks with you and the same God that talks with you and the same God that has held your hand and the same God that has dried your tears is the same God who's got the power to do anything but fail and so is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because while you don't know how you're gonna make it through tomorrow you do know who holds tomorrow in his hand and he's the one that came through 42 generations and he's the one that hung on an old rugged cross and he's the one who shed his blood to wash away our sins and he's the one who hung his head and he died on an old rugged cross and he's the one who they put in an old borrowed tomb and he's the one who stayed there all night Friday night and all day Saturday and all night Saturday night but early on Sunday morning I said early on Sunday morning he's the one who got up with all power in his hand and because he lives you can face tomorrow and because he you can conquer your fears And because he lives You can make it through your adversity And because he lives You can make it through your storms And 
because he lives, you can make it through your valley. And because he lives, you can make it through your difficulty. Because in the name of Jesus, we have, I said we have, we have the victory. So is there anybody here who came to give God some praise? Because no matter what is going wrong in your life, the songwriter said, be not dismayed, whatever tide, for God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. So is there anybody here who came to give God some praise? Because he will help you to bear your burden. And he will help to answer your prayer. And he will help you to make it. And he will give you strength for tomorrow. And he will give you power to take it. And he will help you to rise above it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you believe it, say yeah. If you know it, say yeah. If you're glad about it, then let's give God the glory. And let's give God the honor. And let's give God the praise. And say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
gonna work out? How is the door gonna open? Tell somebody I don't know how, but I do know. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Come on, let him give, let him hear you. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what me come my way. My life is in your hands With Jesus I can make it With him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands Oh, I know can make it I'm certain that you can stand no matter what may come your way your life is in God's hand oh, with Jesus you can make it with him I know you can stand no matter what may come your way, no matter what may come your way, no matter what, oh, my life is in your hands, everyone say, my life is in your hands, everyone say, my life is let the whole church say, my life is in your hands, my life is in, my life is in your hands. Everyone say, my life is in your hands. Every part of me is in your hand, my life. Even my money, even my children, my life is in. Even my job, especially my mind, my life. Quickly, we got to go, but I want to extend an invitation for you to respond to what God has released. It says, I would have fainted, but I believe. Everybody, if you can, please stand. There is something we learned from David that what's going to keep you from fainting is your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. God has supernaturally positioned you. You could have been anywhere today and God put you here. He wanted you to hear the word so he could build your faith. And he wanted you to have faith so that you wouldn't faint. Talking to somebody right now, you came in here on the verge of giving up. But I want you to look at three people around you because you may be the one that God uses to make somebody believe they can make it. Look at three people, seriously, catch them in the eye, tell them you can make it, you can make it. Put it online in the chat, tell somebody you can make it, yes you can, yes you can, you can make it. Quickly, if you're in this room and you're not yet in covenant relationship with Christ, I'm not talking about the kind of relationship where you're generally aware of who he is, but somebody's already coming. Come now, take your time, take your time. I'm talking about, I want to give a special appeal. I'm begging you, brother, my sister, 
if you're not in the kind of relationship with God, one of the worst things that ever happened to me, I was traveling. I needed to wake up to an alarm. And I plugged my phone up. It's over there. I plugged my phone up to the cord. And I set my alarm. And Brother Willie, when I got up, I had missed my flight because my phone was connected to the cord, but the cord wasn't connected to the wall. I know you're sitting in church and it probably feels good, but I gotta tell you, church is just a cord. Church is not enough. It's a great start. I hope you come back next week or the week after, but church, it's just a cord. And if you want real power, you can't just connect to church. You got to connect to Jesus Christ. He says, I want to give you the kind of power through prayer, through scripture, through fellowship that's going to really charge your life. You don't have to live on empty. He said, I can really charge your life. My first invitation is to anybody. He's not coming, Jay. I, my first invitation is to anybody <laughs> who wants to give your life to Jesus so that he can fill you in a fresh and a new way. So my brother's coming. I love it. No, he's not. Y'all stop moving so you don't confuse me. Everybody be still unless you're coming to Jesus. <laughs> if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to make that choice and make that decision. Secondly, not just the power, but you need a conduit of the power. You can't even access the power in a wall without a cord. You need a church in order to have a community of people who are in fellowship and growing like you. Listen, if you're here and you're coming to Christ or the church, come now. Step out of your seat. Walk down the aisle. Do it now. Come, come. My sister has already come. If there are others, please come. If you're online, scan the QR code on screen. Y'all are just walking, got folks clapping and everything. If you're coming to give your life to church or to Christ, come now. Come now. We'll wait for you. We'll give you about one minute to make that choice. If you're coming, come now. God is my own. Yeah. Good morning, St. John. We have coming on Christian Experience, Sister Gina Carter. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate Sister Gina. Sister Come on. Gina Can we lift Carter. up a sound of celebration? Hallelujah. Sister Gina, God bless you. Thank you for following. Uh, Gina broke her toe, and uh, she asked that the uh, congregation lift her healing in prayer. Amen. She's coming for prayer and or to join the church. Is it one or both? Both. Both. Welcome home, Sister Gina. Come on, one more time. Y'all celebrate her. We're going to meet you in the deacon area to pray with you, especially about your healing and about what God's doing in your life. Deac, if you want, you can take her right now into the deacon area. Come on, one more time. Let's celebrate, Sister Gina. And praise God. If you will get your things... And we will, we will escort you to the appointed area. Come on, you can remain standing. Let's receive Reverend Wes, who's going to take us further in prayer. Amen.
Let us pray. I can't, I can't start this. I can't start my conversation with you, Daddy. Father, I can't start this without first saying I love you. Without telling you how much you mean to me. How you've kept me. How you've protected me. How you've corrected me. How you raised me. How you saved me. I gotta throw my head back and say thank you. But before I do that, I want to tell you I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the wavering of my faith. I'm sorry because I know that you're concerned about my actions, but you're more concerned about my reactions. Because I know the difference in what you have made me to be, what you've molded me to be, what you've called me to be. So I'm sorry for the wavering I'm sorry for the inconsistency of my speech. I'm sorry for the inconsistency of my thought pattern against my brethren and my sister and because of what they appear to have done to me. I'm sorry that I wasn't being able to stand on the solid rock and profess you like you asked me to do. You told me, me and you, together against the world. Thank you, God, for loving me in spite of me. Thank you, God, for healing me. There are those under the sound of my voice that are waffling and waiting in the same muck in the mire that I am. But today, today, we don't claim the cuss words. Today, we don't claim the nastiness. Today, we get rid of vindictive issues. Today, we claim Jesus. 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 Somebody said at the utterance of that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your consistency. And now, Father God, as we return to our seats, we're going to plug in to you. Not just the ordinary plug, but we're going to plug into the three-prong plug. I'm plugging into the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost this day, now, and forever. The people of God, say amen. Amen. You may take your seats quickly. You may take your seats quickly. We thank God for being a prayer answering God. There is a cell phone that was left in the choir loft. And so, brothers, check your pocket because somebody left their phone in the choir loft and you're going to mess around and go home and your phone is going to be right here. I don't know whose phone it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, Reverend Anthony, if nobody claims it, bring it right back to my office. I, I was just talking to my wife about getting another phone. And so I just want to know if I need to sing my doxology now or when I get home. But praise God from whom? All new cell phones come. Amen. Let's give God some praise for our male chorus that blessed us during our service. We thank God for our ushers, our deacons, our finance team, our production team, everyone that participated, our band, everyone that participated in our service today. We are so grateful to have our special guest, Harry Dunn, here worshiping with us. And so could you, someone come and uh, escort Harry uh, to the back, and he's going to be in the narthex uh, so that you can uh, enjoy a time of fellowship with him. Also, uh, we're going to have our second Sunday social in the fellowship hall, and so we invite you immediately after our closing prayer to join us in the fellowship hall for a wonderful time of fellowship then. For those that are worshiping online, we thank God for you. And if this service has been a blessing to you, why don't you go to the chat section and type in one word that lets us know what this service has meant to you. I don't know what your word is, but my word is encouraged. And then... Let's give God a crazy praise for our youth church. We had our youth church today, and we are so excited about what God is doing in the lives of our young people. Remember that next Sunday we celebrate Youth Sunday, and we encourage everyone to bring your family, especially your youth, because our youth will lead us in a wonderful day of worship next Sunday. After our closing prayer has been given, be sure to greet someone that you don't know so that we can continue to experience the sweet spirit of fellowship in this place. Now, as we get ready to close, let me leave you with these parting words. Church, be careful what you believe. Because if you believe that things won't work out, you'll probably see more obstacles in your life. But if you believe that things will work out, you'll probably see more opportunities instead. Let us stand as we get ready for our closing prayer. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, this day, and forevermore. Let all the people of the Lord sing. Let the church say amen. Let the church. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church. Oh, everyone sing. Let the church. Thank mm -hmm. you.